Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Pitching Ninja Show. As always, I am the Pitching Ninja, and I am here with the legendary Long Dong Leahy. What is up, my friend Will? Ninja, pleasure to be here, man. Um, just want to start things off with a, with a big Pitching Ninja Show F you to Joe Girardi. F*** you, dude! What was he doing, Ninja? I, you know, I think it is just stupid gamesmanship. Like this whole thing, it is performance art, checking pitchers, patting them down and all that stuff to make fans think that they're doing something. It's kind of like having a police car out front of a place that has nobody in it. They could rely on cameras, watching what a pitcher does and spin rate analysis, pretty easy to do. But they have to do the performance art of doing all this stuff. And then Girardi takes it to a whole nother level by asking a Hall of Famer to be patted down. And Scherzer took offense to it, rightly so. And uh, I just think it was a clown move. Scherzer's not going to use something. He sure as heck probably did at some points in his career, as did most pitchers. But he isn't going to use it once it's banned and have, be suspended for 10 games and have his legacy tarnished. He's just not going to do that. And for Girardi to cast aspersions on Scherzer's character like that, I think it's, I think it's bull It makes me so happy that Scherzer got the W. They, they, they beat the bag out of the Phillies and Girardi just looks like an idiot. Also getting tossed too. Just all around wins there. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, that's one of those things that you fight somebody. Like, back in the day, there would have been a duel. Somebody who wasn't as fortunate or, or didn't make it through all the checks was Hector Santiago. He's our, the first first martyr for the cause here in Ninja. He went down, he says the sticky stuff on his glove that he was removed for was simply rosin. What do you, what do you think about this? I would be willing to bet that that's true. I think Bauer brought up this issue when this first started. You can take sweat and rosin and have a baseball stick to your hand just from that mixture alone. So I don't know how umpires are gonna figure it out. I think it sucks for a player to be treated like a criminal in this stuff when, you know, it, until there's a problem post saying you're going to enforce it, I think I would assume, I'm personally going to assume most pitchers, all pitchers are not doing this anymore. I think we've all, we're level setting to a new world. I would really doubt Santiago did it. He certainly has a plausible excuse. I saw him putting rosin on his arm just basically to dry off his arm and i didn't notice him going to his glove i didn't notice anomalies in his spin rate so i would tend to believe someone's innocent until proven guilty of course if he's found if they find stuff on the glove sure i mean he should be punished no doubt about it but i don't think that's what happened so angel hernandez checked trevor bauer pretty pretty diligently one might say my, my assumption is Angel couldn't use his eyes because they don't really work very well. So he had to take his hand and put it on Trevor's hand and try to figure out if Trevor's hand was sticky. Again, to Trevor's point, rosin and sweat are sticky. Pitchers are going to use a combo of rosin and sweat to at least get some degree of tackiness on the ball. That's just what you're going to do. So no doubt, like everybody's doing that because it's legal. And I don't know how Angel expected to tell the difference between that and any foreign substance that Trevor could have used. Thought it was an odd situation. I think calling the Cy Young Award winner, who's kind of been vocal on the other side too. Let's not forget, Trevor may have been using stuff. Don't know, probably has. But before that, he was being begged to use stuff. And he said, it's against the rules. I shouldn't do it. This is not something that's OK. And then later realized that, M that MLB wasn't going to enforce it, that it was basically a wink, wink, nod, nod. There really is no rule. And you're putting your team at a disadvantage by not doing what everyone else is doing and putting your career at a disadvantage. So he started doing something, arguably. But I don't, I don't see him as a rule breaker. That's not like he wants rules. So to use him as like a poster child for Angel Hernandez, I want to hold your hand moment was kind of just weird. And Angel Hernandez just sucked too. Like his strike zone is always terrible. He's an easy target to, to pick on, but there's a lot of truth to it. He's a rotten umpire who has a big ego about it. Aaron Nola tying an all time pitching record this weekend with 10 straight batters face struck out. Were you watching this live Ninja? I was absolutely watching it live. Aaron Nola is a fun pitcher to watch. His stuff is nasty. He hadn't put it together well this season for a, you know for full games, but he's he's a top tier pitcher. 
still even being as good as he is to to tie an all-time record set by tom siever like 50 plus years ago is insane like this should have gotten way more press than it did this is something that didn't happen for 50 years and it's a legit record 10 straight k's is is insane yeah when you're when you're tying 50 year old siever records you know you're doing something right the long dong of the week has to go to kyle schwarber he, he's breaking records all over the place he's doing stuff that even barry bonds and mark mcguire and sammy sosa didn't do he's now got 11 bombs in the last nine games he had a eight and five game stretch it, it, this this run he's on just will not stop it, it, the guy's hitting beach balls and a lot of his a lot of his dongs too are, are 400 plus just a absolute spanks by schwarber and it's awesome see i i, I don't know when it's going to end you know, I'm getting uncomfortable with you talking about dongs and spanks in the same <laughs> sense. So uh, uh, we now. might have to censor you. Usually it's me who says bad stuff. Hey, listen, man, blame, blame Schwarbs. He is, uh, yeah, he's on a whole nother level. And now, Pitching Ninjas, top 10, filthiest pitchers of the week. At number 10, we have a tie. I have Tyler Rogers' rising slider. You never see a pitch coming at this angle, and the idea of a slider rising, well, that's pure witchcraft. And also have Kumar Rocker sliders. We had some great home plate views of this slider, and I think that that's so much fun to watch. I wish MLB would have more of these camera angles or stadiums broadcast teams, whoever it takes, just do it. Do it for Pitching Ninja. At number nine, Michael Walker's ankle-breaking changeup. This thing was filthy, and it looks here like Chavis's ankles are not gonna be the same after it. Like, it, he almost looks like Bambi trying to get up on ice. At number eight, Kevin Gossman's splitters. Now this splitter, like, it's gonna make him a Cy Young contender. He can't win the Cy Young, obviously, because Jacob deGrom's in the league. But without DeGrom there, I mean, he is absolutely a contender and it's mostly due to this splitter. It is, it is just absolutely disgusting. At number seven, Zach Wheeler's 95 mile an hour slider. 95 mile an hour sliders are freak show stuff, but yet both Wheeler and DeGrom throw one. And uh, I think people don't realize because Jacob DeGrom's in the league, how good Zach Wheeler is touches 100 and throws these 95 mile an hour sliders so keep your eye on zach wheeler great pitcher and a 95 mile an hour slider that's insane i appreciate degrom getting mentioned in both seven and eight <laughs> <laughs> at a number at number six not jacob degrom shohei otani's slider and splitter both of these pitches disgusting Otani's slider has been outstanding this year and I think it's overshadowed by the fact that no one can hit his splitter but his slider is nasty too and he's been throwing this cutting fastball I don't know that he does it on purpose I think it's when he tries to throw it glove side he cuts through the ball but if he's doing this on purpose the man is at a whole nother level at number five Herman Marquez absolutely murdering shed long here just a bohemian rhapsody curveball. The man's soul escaped from his body. That's all I can tell you. At number four, Joe Kelly, or more appropriately, Joseph Kelly, since these pitches were nasty and in the zone, and his absolutely disgusting 100 plus mile an hour two seamers. Joe Kelly, when he's on, is really, really nasty. The issue is he's not always on. At number three, Clayton Kershaw with a turn back the clock moment, but he turns back the clock a lot. Cooperstown curveball, this pitch should have its own wing in Cooperstown. And then his curveball sometimes overshadows all his other pitches because it's so pretty, but his nastiest pitch is a slider and his slider is unhittable. He had 13 Ks and it was mostly due to his slider. Absolutely filthy stuff. At number two, we talked about him earlier, but you got to give Aaron Nola a spot in the top 10. Filthy curveballs, nasty changeups, and his comeback two-seamer. Man had it all working, and you kind of have to to get 10 consecutive Ks. Insane. And at number one, future Hall of Famer, Dirty Craig Kimbrell. He has been lights out this season, no more so here as he closed the no-hitter that he didn't know he even was part of. 
uh, with an absolutely disgusting knuckle curve and fastball combo, just at a whole nother level. It's so fun to see when Craig Kimbrell is pitching like this. I mean, he's always been one of my favorite pitchers, as good as any reliever has ever been in the history of baseball. And I'm including the Sandman in there. Like he is way, way up there. And this is the top spot because he closed out a no hitter unbeknownst to him. You know, I want to give out a case strut of the week to Mike Vassell from UVA. He had two fantastic case struts, one skipping off the mound, like these power skips, and then the other sword case strut, courtesy of the Trevor Bauer pitching ninja combo. I, I loved seeing this, like do more of it. Two, they lost the game, but it wasn't because of him. He was nasty and these K struts deserve a place in the potential K strut of the year contest. When you're strutting like that, it, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Ninja, I did want to give a quick shout out to the, the Tigers for a walk-off bunt. Um, I'm, I am pro bunts. I'm the pro bunt person on the Pitching Ninja show. I think with the shift and all these things going on and the, the lack of base running and general lack of hitting, more bunts and it shows you can win games with bunts. So congrats to the Tigers. And, and and to be clear, I have no problem with bunts for a base hit in general. Like if you're a good bunter, do it. It's more sack bunts, I think, that drive people crazy because just the analytics behind it don't say it's not worth it. But bunting for a base hit to beat the shift, I mean, it's kind of fun. Like I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> it's been another great week of the Pigeon Ninja Show. Until next time, I'm going to K-Strut on out of here. Keep throwing flames. Strike three!